There are certain mistakes that if you make, it's going to affect your life, affect your finances, affect your business, affect everything around you. In an hospital, if a surgeon makes a mistake and if a gate man makes a mistake, they both made mistakes, but you see, the impact and the effect is going to be different. The outcome of their mistake is going to be different. Today, I'm going to be starting a series, you know, of teaching on eight costly mistakes to avoid in the marketplace. You see, to hair is human. There will never be a point in your life where you're not going to make mistakes. You would always make mistakes as a business person, as a career person. And whatever it is you're doing, you're going to make mistakes. But you know what? There are mistakes that you cannot afford to make. Because making those mistakes can lead to your destruction in life and in the marketplace. Because every mistake is not equal in impact and in effect. I remember reading the story of a man by the name of Ezekiah being king of Israel many centuries ago. The story is told that he was sick and a particular nation writes their king at about the fact that he was sick so they sent to him emissaries. Now the king that sent emissaries to him to check up on his health were not necessarily an ally nation. These guys, right, were their enemies, but because of the emissaries that were sent and because it was a bigger nation, you know, scripture tells us that Ezekiel was excited about the fact that emissaries came to check on him from this particular king. So when they showed up, he showed them his palace, showed them his treasuries, showed them everything. And after those guys left, the prophet came to Ezekiel and said, how many things have these people seen in your kingdom? And he said, everything. And the prophet said to him, you know what, a time is going to come that everything you have revealed to the emissary of this king will be cutted away to that nation and you are going to lose it all. Now, this was a mistake that Ezekiah made out of excitement, right, that a particular king reached out to him who seemed to be a more powerful king. Out of that excitement, he revealed to the king what he should not have revealed to the king through his emissaries. Now, that was a mistake that costed him a lot and costed the nation of Israel. Now, the mistakes you might have been making, right, might not have an impact or effect on a nation. But let me tell you this. There are certain mistakes that if you make, it's going to affect your life, affect your finances, affect your business, affect everything around you. And that's why you need to recognize these mistakes. In an organization, the mistake a janitor makes cannot have the same effect like the mistake a general manager makes. In an hospital, if a surgeon makes a mistake and if a gate man makes a mistake, they both made mistakes. But you see, the impact and the effect is going to be different. The outcome of their mistake is going to be different. You see, if a gate man makes a mistake, right, no life is going to be lost. But if a brain surgeon makes a mistake, a life is going to be lost right so you need to understand that there are mistakes that when you make you may never recover from and that's some of the mistakes i want to talk to you about right starting today you look at someone like saul the king if you're a student of scripture saul made a mistake and he lost the kingdom david made some mistakes and he was forgiven right so you need to know certain mistakes to avoid in the marketplace if you don't want your labor to be in vain I strongly believe the first mistake you need to avoid in the marketplace, right, is creating a disconnect between your work and your faith work. Now, what do I mean by that? Most times, when people go into the marketplace, what they try to do is they try to create a difference or a dichotomy of some sort between their work and their work with their God. Now, you need to understand that as human beings, we are first a spirit we have a soul and we live in a body you see everybody is spiritual now the dimension of the spirituality is what varies but every human being is spiritual now some people are spiritual in a diabolical sense why some people are spiritual in the sense that they take their faith walk with god seriously you look at someone like david when david was going to confront goliath right on the battlefield the story is told in 1 Samuel chapter 17 that when Goliath saw David, he cursed him in the name of his gods. Did you see that? This was a warrior seeing a young child coming to fight against him. You see, naturally, because it has been said that he was a champion, he never lost any battle before that time. 
He should have just seen it as you see, this guy wants to fight against me, he's small in stature, I'm going to crush him. But you see, the story is told that Goliath cursed him. What does it mean to curse? Right, to empower, to fail through the spoken word. So Goliath understood that every time I want to go into a battle, I must start first in the realm of the spirit before I start engaging in the physical. But you see, what Goliath did not understand was that he was being confronted by a young guy who also understood the power of his faith walk in the marketplace. So what David did when Goliath cursed him in the name of his gods, the account tells us that David also spoke words. As a matter of fact, he spoke more words than the words that Goliath spoke. And he told Goliath to see, I'm not coming to you by my strength, by my competence and my expertise. But I'm coming to you in the name of the God of Israel. And we know what happened in the story of David and Goliath. Eventually, David being an underdog won that battle. Because David had an understanding of the fact that he was not just fighting a physical battle. He was engaged in a spiritual warfare. Friends, you need to understand that the marketplace is a battlefield. The marketplace is a battleground. Don't be deceived by the branding. Don't be deceived by the packaging. Don't be deceived by the things you see on the outside. There is always a spiritual power backup that determines the outplay of what the human eyes can see. So when you're going into the marketplace, if you're going to be significant in the marketplace, if you're going to break through in your field of play, you must have an understanding that the marketplace is a battleground. And that battle is not something you fight with your strength. It is not something you fight with guns and knives or with fists. It is something you fight in the place of prayers. It is something you fight in the place of fasting. It is something you fight, right, through your faith walk, right, or your walk with God. You look at someone like Joseph. When Joseph was brought before Pharaoh, it was said concerning Joseph. Same thing was said concerning Daniel, that in you is the spirit of the gods. You see, Joseph said to the Pharaoh, he said, God is going to give you an answer of peace. He didn't say, you know what, I'm an administrator. I'm good with management. Don't worry, Pharaoh. I'm going to tell you what to do. But you see, Joseph understood that only God could give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So the first mistake people make is that when they go into the marketplace, they try to separate their spirituality from their engagement in the marketplace. Don't ever make that mistake. The second mistake people make that you need to avoid in the marketplace, right, is not taking your work seriously. Oftentimes, people make this mistake because they are so spiritual, they believe that their work doesn't matter. That whatever needs to happen in their life, God will just do it. You see, you hear people saying things like, God will do it. I know my God will do it. What exactly is he going to do? You see, you need to understand that zero times zero is still zero. Zero times one, right, <laughs> is zero. A hundred times zero is still zero. A million times zero is still zero. So zero in this context is your effort. If there is no effort from your part, no matter the grace, no matter what God wants to do for you, it's still going, the outcome is still going to be nothing. You see, it is man's responsibility that provokes God's ability. Every miracle has a man part and a God part. You see, you need to take your work seriously in the marketplace. As a person of faith, you need to take your work seriously. Your work is an important aspect of your existence. You know, when God created man, the very first thing God gave to man was work. I've had people say things like, you know, if man had not fallen in the Garden of Eden, probably we wouldn't have to go to work. You see, we'll just be living a good life, having a nice time. But that's not true because Jesus told us of his father in heaven. You see, he said, my father works and I also work. You see, even if man had not fallen, we'll still have to work. Work is an essential part of human existence. Work is what makes the world go round. Work is something you must never trivialize. So you need to understand that if you're going to break through in the marketplace, if you're going to live a life of significance, work must be very important to you. I came across a particular statistic some years ago. And what, what, one of the things that was revealed in that particular statistics, right, was that people that work for 0 to 40 hours every week end up living a life of survival. That whatever you do in terms of productive engagement between 40 hours and 60 hours produces a life of success. And what you do for 60 hours and more every week is what eventually culminates in a life of significance. So the question is, how many hours do you invest in your so-called work? 
I've seen a lot of people in the name of entrepreneurship watching movies during work hours, playing during work hours. They just believe because I'm an entrepreneur, I have my time to myself, and because of that, they just do things anyhow. They don't understand, they don't realize that time is the unit measurement of life, right? And that time, the moment, every second you waste, you will never get it back. Every minute, every hour gone by would never be restored. It would never come back right so take your work seriously work while you're at work if you're a career person every time you say you are going to work be truly engaged in a productive labor don't be at work and be chatting online don't be at work and be chatting with your friends don't be at work and just be doodling and wasting time every time you're at work bury your head in your work right get yourself involved in productive engagement do whatever it takes to advance your life and your career and as a business person even if you are just starting out and you don't have a lot of clients create work for yourself create work for yourself create work for yourself you see that work that people are employed in someone created it and they created responsibilities you see people don't have work because they are irresponsible responsibility is what creates you know work as it were so as a business person, even if you don't have clients, the spirit of responsibility will make you create jobs for yourself. Don't sit on your laurels. Don't sit on your butts. Get up and do something about the actualization of your destiny. You have dreamt enough. It is time for you to get to work. No dream is ever achieved while you are sleeping. Every dream, no matter how beautiful, no matter how lofty, you still need to be awake to fulfill those dreams. So. I'm going to be calling it a wrap here today. Next week, every Monday, we're going to be doing this at the Life Masterclass. So remember two mistakes you need to avoid. Number one is don't create a separation between your work and your faith work. And number two, don't ignore your work. Take your work seriously. These are costly mistakes you need to avoid if you want to experience a life of significance in the marketplace. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.